Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in Dragon Ball GT, audiences were introduced to Super Saiyan 4, Goku's ultimate form at the time that propelled him far past his previous power levels and different states that we had seen with the Super Saiyan forms before that, and took him to a capability in which he was able to overcome his enemies. And when it comes to different forms in the Dragon Ball franchise, for me, Super Saiyan 4 is by far the best transformation that we get for the Saiyans, and perhaps in the entire franchise overall. And I'm going to be going in-depth and explaining exactly why that is, not only in terms of the design, but also in terms of its origin, and of course, also, how it compares to some of the other forms that we see in the franchise. So let me get into that right now. Now, Dragon Ball GT, of course, is kind of a contentious series when it comes to many fans. People often disregard it as being non-canon, as something that doesn't matter. You know, Dragon Ball Super is a million times better and so on and so forth. But when it comes to Super Saiyan 4, this is usually the thing that pretty much everyone overwhelmingly agrees on, that this is the best thing from the Dragon Ball GT series, perhaps, that it is something that most fans would not mind at all seeing uh, seeing it be canon in Dragon Ball Super in the current continuity, and if somehow Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, or so on were to be able to attain this form, People wouldn't mind if it didn't necessarily line up with the other canon or, you know, it'd probably start a whole canon debate in of itself. Oh my gosh, Super Saiyan 4 is canon Dragon Ball Super. Does that mean Dragon Ball GT is actually going to happen? Oh my god. Uh, who knows? Either way, the fact of the matter is this is a great looking form, which is one of the reasons why it actually stands the test of time. Because look at this design when it comes to Super Saiyan 4. You have... Goku uh, being taken from before he attained this form, a uh, child into the adult body, automatically undoing one of the biggest issues with Dragon Ball GT that started with its very first episode of Goku being changed back into a kid. But here, boom, not only is he an adult, but he's bigger than before and he's far more primal. Whereas the other Super Saiyan forms, which I'll get into soon, are ones that don't really feel like anywhere near as big of a departure from the base form as, let's say, Ozaru with Super Saiyan 4, this truly looks and feels like a real evolution of the biological form that the Saiyans are in, taking on the uh, fur, the uh, kind of ape and primate fur that covers Goku, or when it comes to others, we also see uh, Vegeta get this form, and just look how awesome Vegeta looks in this. Not only does he, for some reason, get magical leather pants that show up with uh, this belt and you know gloves and stuff after he transforms, but also just look at you know the the fur, how it complements his uh, muscles, how it makes him look even more badass and manly than it did before. Look at you know the eyes, like basically it looks like they're almost wearing a kabuki theater eyeliner, which was actually the inspiration in part for the design. The hair becomes way more um, lengthy, akin to Super Saiyan 4, and or Super Saiyan 3, and also it still retains their initial uh, coloration. Of course, with Vegeta, his hair goes back and forth between being black and brown in the uh, anime, trying to give him kind of a differentiation from Goku and other Saiyans, but it just looks awesome, badass, primal, and feels like another true evolution of the Super Saiyan form, which fortunately not just Goku or one character gets this, but so does Vegeta, and by the end of the series, because of this form, both of them seem to be equalized in power. Not just that, but Super Saiyan also has, probably, Super Saiyan 4, maybe has the most significant impact on the overall story of the franchise, because when it comes to Super Saiyan 4 in its origin, as we could see here, Goku starts out, he becomes an Ozaru again because he looks at the Earth, which is refracting enough of the Blutz waves or Brutes waves to make him transform into a golden Ozaru, which is, you know, Ozaru, but when you're a Super Saiyan. And then, because he is able to regain control over that form, because of how Pan helps him to remember, he's able to compress that down into Super Saiyan 4, which isn't giving him some kind of static multiplier. It isn't something that's like, oh, it's 10 times 
times stronger than Super Saiyan 3, like a lot of people like to say. It's something that, if I believe or remember correctly, according to the GT Perfect Files, as much as you may want to count guidebooks and stuff like that, I'm always kind of on the fence about that because of videos I talked about in the past, but... It brings their potential, their power out to its absolute physical maximum. So Goku doesn't need any other forms, nor does he get any other forms after this in Dragon Ball GT. He just gets Super Saiyan 4, which makes it that much more impactful and important because it's able to help him against every single villain that he fights. It's able to help him to defeat Baby, the greatest villain in the Dragon Ball GT series and one of the best ones in the franchise. It's able to help him to defeat, uh, I would say Super Android 17, but he was able to kind of uh, beat him because of plot hacks. But nonetheless, it helps him and Vegeta when they power up to Super Saiyan 4 to get the advantage against Omega Shenron. And let's not forget, for example, with the ultimate fusion of these two together in perhaps the coolest fusion of all time, which is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I mean, look at this awesome transformation. The original time uh, in like a quote unquote canon story. Story. I guess you could say that Goku and Vegeta fused together uh, back when GT was actually an official continuation. And the best version of Gogeta, which for me, Gogeta was always the coolest fusion of them. I know that there's always the whole thing about Vegeta versus Gogeta. I prefer Gogeta, and he looks that much more awesome in Dragon Ball GT in this form than he ever did even in Fusion Reborn. Fukatsu no Fusion. Very similar to Fukatsu no F, where they introduced another super Saiyan form, a god form in fact, which was an expansion of another god form, which again, that's another thing that I should probably mention here with regard to Super Saiyan 4, how it compares to all of the other transformations. I mean, just look at this little fan art that somebody made that looks great, and a shout out to them where it really just stands apart compared to like the newer forms that we get in the franchise, like Super Saiyan God, where Goku doesn't get bulkier, he doesn't look like he really evolved, he just, you know, gets thinner, leaner, and has red hair and a kind of a fiery aura. Whereas look at Super Saiyan 4 by comparison, that looks like a real God form to me, a real true primal evolved state for a Saiyan. And compare Super Saiyan 4 to all the other transformations we've gotten, Super Saiyan, which Sure, it looks cool, but it just makes Goku a little bit bulkier, changes his eye color and his hair color. Super Saiyan 2 is basically an extension of that. Super Saiyan 3 looks maybe closest in terms of being primal to this because he loses the eyebrows, grows longer hair, becomes the bulkiest of yet. But then we go in the complete opposite direction with Super Saiyan 4, becomes way leaner to go with Toriyama's more um, skinny style nowadays, I guess you could say. And then Super Saiyan Blue is just the worst one of all in terms of its actual actual changes because it's just Super Saiyan Bo the blue hair hair dye instead. You know, Goku broke in a Bulma's hair dye closet. Same with uh, Future Trunks and Dragon Ball Super. And I uh, just started putting it all over his hair, his eyebrows, and I guess giving him eye drops or blue uh, contacts. But nonetheless, it doesn't look anywhere near as cool. And neither really does Ultra Instinct or Ultra Instinct Omen. They just all just look like Super Saiyan forms that are hair swaps. They're lazy. They're less rich. Original, whereas when we actually get Super Saiyan 4, this thing looks awesome. I mean, look at the design and look at these. Night and day in a good way for Super Saiyan 4. Now, while I am on the subject of Super Saiyan 4 and, you know, maybe bring one criticism there to it, I would have to say that I do kind of wish that Super Saiyan 4 had a different aura because Super Saiyan 4, you know, it, it tends to kind of just have like the traditional Super Saiyan aura for the most part. It doesn't really, um, you know, have its own distinct aura like Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan, uh, you know, um really a lot of the different forms that we get. And I guess that's more of an aesthetic thing, but if his if his aura was like red or fiery like Super Saiyan God, which is one of the cooler aspects of that form, then I think it would have looked that much better. And maybe you could argue that the hair on the head maybe should change color too, so that he would actually just be like, you know, red hair from, uh, you know, 
head to toe, I guess you could say. I don't think we ever see Goku without shoes or anything. So for, for all we know, he gets hobbit feet with like really furry feet too. Uh, but nonetheless, the fact of the matter is that overall, I think when it comes down to the impact, the design, the power and everything else of Super Saiyan 4, it's definitely the best in Dragon Ball, uh, the entire franchise. So that for me is why Super Saiyan 4 is the best form in the Dragon Ball franchise, better than the original Super Saiyan, better than all of the other grades of Super Saiyan that come afterward, better than Legendary Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan Rose, Evolution, Kaioken on top of it, you know, Ultra Instinct, Omen, and whatever other Super Saiyan Rainbow, Super Saiyan Green, and so on forms that they come out in the future. It's going to be extremely hard, if not impossible possible for them ever to top Super Saiyan 4, and let's be honest, why should they even bother at this point? That is the best form that they're going to get, and really Dragon Ball for far too long has relied on transformations anyway. People just come to expect it at this point, rather than, you know, actually having a moment like the Super Saiyan 4 transformation, or even like the original Super Saiyan transformation, where it truly feels not only earned, but also like a major impact and change on the story and the narrative as a whole. But what do you guys think? Do you agree that Super Saiyan 4 is the best transformation or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe.